I am Erin Patton, and it's time for Meta Business. And today, we're focusing on how not to focus on the problem. And I'm sure you're like, what, what are you saying, Erin? I am encouraging us to not focus on the problem. So our focus is not to focus on the problem. So let's get into that. And really, I mean, this couldn't be a more important, significant learning opportunity for any manager, any CEO, any organizational leader, any startup founder, is when you're moving through your work day and you come across a fire, you come across a hurdle, don't give it your attention. And I mean, this has really helped to transform my life, shift my thinking, shift my way of even operating and being. Because once you take a step back, understand the laws of how this universe works, Many of us understand it, but don't necessarily apply it. And that is wherever your focus goes, energy flows. So let me say that again, wherever your focus goes, energy flows. So then when you think about that, why would you focus on the problem? Because we do understand from universal law, physical law, metaphysical law, that if you're focusing on the problem, then it automatically, by law, amplifies. It gets bigger, it gets greater, it gets crazier, it gets angrier, and you just feed the beast. And that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to be problem solvers, not problem starters. So let's get ready for a quantum leap in our mindset, in our existence, and how to achieve balance, how to achieve calm, how to have innovative solutions to problems, in the workplace. So number one, first and foremost, is making sure that you see the problem for what it is. See the problem for what it is. Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in things and we wanna play blame games and all those things that we don't understand really and truly that all the problem is is misalignment. Something's out of balance, something's out of whack. And you need to take the time to observe that. You need to take the time to see it for what it is. Was it just miscommunication? Was it that you misunderstood something? Was there, where was the misalignment? And that requires us bringing us to the number two point of being present. Being able to be present allows you to not only take that step back, that observer focus, but being able to elevate your consciousness and elevate your vibration such that you can come to the problem solving mindset. And Albert Einstein said this so brilliantly when he was talking about, you know, just solving problems generally when you're solving quantum equations, you can't look at the equation from the level of, you know, a student. You have to come up above genius level to solve the problem. So essentially what he's encouraging us to do is when we're looking at a problem, we can't stay there mired in the details and discussing it all day with everybody and understanding who the problem is, all that. We don't have time for that. We have to come above. We have to go high in order to better solve the problem. And that's really where the work is, because sometimes it may require you turning off that computer, putting down that monitor on your laptop, and just being still. You get that email, you get that wild phone call, and you're just like, oh my God, what do I do with this? And so, much, so often, so many of us just want to react, and we're acting, reacting from our our fight or flight responses. There's really this impulse within us because we still have this mammalian, this mammal, this human being, sometimes beastly body that wants to protect ourselves. We just want to be protected. And in the workplace, all that energy is not even necessary. It's, it's not even necessary. We don't need to go to war every day. So really, we want to focus on how we can maintain that presence that peace of mind in the middle of the day. And it could be something as simple as closing the laptop, closing your eyes, breathing, being present. It can really just be that simple. And by making sure that you're invited into your existence, something that connects you back to source, connects you back to your being, connects you, connects you back to your reason for being. Which brings us to the third point, which is really about trusting in those greater forces. Why don't we, take the time, have the faith to trust in the forces that create worlds, the forces that create the universe that we live in today. I mean, there obviously is a force 
that creates the trees and the animals and us beings, why don't we trust that source? Why don't we trust that force? We really are so quick to be active, get active, do what we need to do to fix the problem and not understanding that at the core, we cannot control everything. And I'm about to say that again, because we know as leaders, as organizational leaders, you got to where you are because you're good at what you do. We know that, but you cannot control everything. And how gratifying does it feel when you can just be like, okay, let me just sit back and watch God work on this one. Let me just chill and watch source work because that's the greatest measure of, of, of force that, that exists well beyond us. It animates us and every other living creature. So allowing us to be, allowing ourselves to be present and allowing the universe to work for us is the greatest state to be. And I promise you, I promise you that in this state, in this existence of peace and trust is when magic happens. It's when miracles happen. It's when problems turn into possibilities. So I'm telling you right now, making sure that you take that focus off the problem and put that energy, redirect that energy in a more I would say a positive way where you can be present, you can be intentional and you can receive all that knowledge, that information from source, that light that you need to come out and create, you know, a pivot into a a more innovative solution. So again, we're going to walk through that. Number one, first and foremost, see the problem for what it is. It's an opportunity for growth. It's misalignment, an opportunity to bring ideas, communication, people back into alignment. And number two, we do that by being present. We do that by not being reactive. We do that by not judging, by not, you know, tapping into those fear emotions and really coming from a place of love. And that love is in the present moment. And number three is making sure that we trust in the forces that create worlds. We got to trust in those greater forces. We have to be able to sit back and let go and let God, let go and let God is and chill. You know, so with that, I want you all to take this message into your work, into your life and manifest the life of your dreams, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's with friends, because all these tips, all these tools work in all those different places. So drop me a comment. Let me know how this video resonates with you. DM me, send me a message. And of course, you can find me on my website at erinpatton.com where you can find more about my services, coaching opportunities, and of course, amazing energies and information such as this. So with all that said, much love to you. I wish you all the best. Peace.